Well, hi there, kiddos. We are going to start solving equations that have the variables on both sides. And so these equations work just like the ones we've been solving, except you're going to have a variable on the left and the right hand side of the equal signs. So they're going to involve an extra step where you have to combine them and put them together. So first example that you should have is 4 plus 2x equals negative 5 minus x. And there are lots of ways to start these problems, but what I always do, step one, is get all of my variables together on the same side. It does not matter whether it's the left side or the right side, but I always try to get all my variables together on the same side. For this first problem, I'm going to get rid of this minus x over here and put it on this side over here with this x. And the reason I'm using this one is because it's negative right now and so I can add it to both sides makes a positive and I like positives better than negatives. So if I add x on this side, those x's will cancel. But then on the other side of the equation, I have to add that x and I have to add it to the term that has the x. You cannot add it to the 4. They are not like terms. So you still have the 4, but you add these up. 2x plus another x gives me 3x. And now that equals negative 5. Now this looks like a multi-step equation that we've had, had practice solving for the last several days. And so we've seen this. And so we're going to subtract 4 first and get that cancel that out. So now I have 3x equals negative 9. And then we're going to divide both sides by 3. So I end up with x equals negative 3. And you can check this real easy by plugging this back into here. You would just have to plug the negative 3 into both of the x's to make sure the left side equals the right side if you wanted to make sure it worked. So now our second example. I've got 12h minus 8 equals 3h plus 46. 3h is smaller than 12h, and so that's the one I'm going to cancel out so that I can, again, keep things positive. So if I subtract 3h, because that's a positive 3h right now, that's the only way to cancel it, and subtract 3h from this one, I end up with 9h minus 8 equals 46. And then if I add 8 to both sides to finish solving my equation, I should get that 9h equals 54. And then when I divide both sides by 9, I get that h equals 4. Sorry, not 4. It's 6. I just wanted it to be 4. h equals 6 because 6 times 9 makes 54. So h equals 6. And again, to check it, you would plug it into both h's. Make sure that the left equals the right. Now let's check out some that are a little more complicated. I'm going to change my pen color here to sort of make things show up a little better. Let's see if that works. Okay. So now what we have is we have this 6x divided by 4. Sorry, 6x plus 4. I'm struggling. 6x plus 4 all divided by 2 equals x minus 6. And this is one of those problems where we did this before. And the first thing I wanted you to do, I apologize that you are having to listen to my little puppy bark. Honey feels like she needs every dog bone in the house, I think. Um, the first thing we're going to do is clear out that denominator. So in order to do that, we're going to multiply both sides by 2. That way, these 2's will cancel each other out. And then I multiply this side by 2 as well. That leaves me with only 6x plus 4 over here on the right. Then on this side, I have to multiply x and the minus 6 both by 2. I have to multiply the whole thing, not just part of it. So 2 times x gives me 2x. 2 times negative 6 gives me negative 12. And so now I have an equation variables on both sides. I have a positive 6x on the left, a positive 2x on the right. I will cancel out the smaller one so that I can keep things positive. So I subtract 2x on both sides. So that gives me 4x plus 4 equals, this is going to be negative 12 because that minus sign is still there. It's still part of the problem. So subtract 4 on each side. And you now have that 4x equals negative 16. And then when you divide by 4 on both sides, you now have that x equals negative 4. This one was one of those. I just got rid of the denominator. <clears throat> so I didn't have to deal with that fraction. Now the next problem 
has a fraction in it. It does not look the same. It, this does not have a whole bunch of stuff divided by a number. It just says three-fourths x. But I can treat this one just like I treated this one. And what, I, and what I mean by that is I can clear out that fraction and make the fraction disappear so I don't have to try and solve using a fraction. So I'm going to do that, and I'm going to multiply both sides by 4. When I do that, this 4 cancels out this 4. So on this side, what's left is this 3 and this x. And so you have 3x left over here. But on this side, you have to multiply all of this times 4. So 4 times negative x makes negative 4x. And then 4 times 7 makes 28. Now, when you run across a problem like this, there is nothing but an x term over here. There is no plus or minus anything after it. It is just 3x. When you run across a problem like this and there is only an x term on one side, that's where you want the x's to end up. Every other problem I have moved and put my x's on the left, this time I'm going to put them on the right. Number one, it keeps things positive, And number two, there's nothing but x's over here, so why not? So I'm going to add 4x to both sides. So now I have 28 equals 7x. And then when I divide by 7, you get that 4 equals x. So let's do one last one. This one has a lot of things happening. You got variables on both sides. You got parentheses. We're going to end up having like terms. We're going to have lots of things shaken. So we're going to simplify first. I can't do anything with this because it's as simple as it gets. But over here I have parentheses that I have to take care of. So we're going to distribute 2 times 2y is 4y. 2 times 5 makes 10 plus 37. And let's go ahead and simplify because I can put these together. So I end up with 4y plus 7 over here. And then over here I get 4y plus 47. Hopefully you have noticed by now that my variables are exactly the same. I've got 4y and 4y. Well, if I try and cancel them out, if I subtract 4y from here, they cancel. But if I subtract 4y from here, they also cancel, leaving me with 7 equals 47. This is not a true statement, which if you will remember from the other day means that we have a problem that has no solution because there is no value I can plug in for y that will make the left side equal the right side. So it is no solution. Let's move on and talk about some word problems. My, my puppy dog's driving me crazy. Okay, so now let's deal with some word problems. I have if the sum of the smallest and largest of three consecutive integers is equal to the smallest integer increased by 10, huh, what's the largest of the three consecutive integers? Well, consecutive integers means one right after the other, like one, two, three. And if I add the smallest and the largest, it equals the smallest increased by 10. Well, the first thing we have to do is figure out what our numbers are. So I have three numbers. I have the small, the medium, and the large. Because you have three numbers that all are in a row. Okay. Since I don't know anything about any of them, we're going to say the smallest is x. The next one would be x plus 1 because I would add 1 to get to the next number. And the largest one would be x plus 2 because I would have to add 2 to the first number to get to the third one. Just like having even and odds. So, it says the sum of the smallest and largest. So that means I have to add the smallest plus the largest. And that is equal to the smallest one increased by 10. So the smallest one increased by 10. So a lot going on in this problem, I understand. But so what you really don't need is this information. We used it to set up our problem, but it is not going to help us, and we don't need it to answer our question. So let's simplify. Put your x's together. So you have 2x plus 2 equals x plus 10. And again, I'm going to get my variables together. Two positive x's. I got positive 2x and positive 1x, so I'm going to just move the smaller one over so that I can keep things positive. 2x minus x just leaves me with x plus 2 equals 10. And so then I subtract 2 from both sides, and I get that x equals 8. Well, so the smallest number is 8. But the question says, what is the largest? So in order to answer my question, I have to go down here and plug in x. So 8 plus 2 equals 10. So the largest of the three numbers 
is 10. And if you wanted to write them all down, the three consecutive numbers are 8, 9, 10. So again, now I have three consecutive even integers. And so the total of the three even integers is equal to the product of the smallest one and four. And we've got to find out the three integers. Again, I've got three integers. I have small, medium, and large, just like before. Only difference is now these are consecutive even and not just consecutive. So they don't go one, two, three. They go two, four, six. So the small one is still just going to be x. But now since I'm skipping a number to get from one even number to the next even number, my medium one is x plus 2. And then i got to skip another number, so my large one is x plus 4. And if you think about it, if the small one is 2, I have to add 2 to get to the next one, which is 4. And then I have to add 4 to the number 2 to get to the next one, which is 6. Okay? So now it tells us the total of these three. So x plus x plus 2 plus x plus 4 is equal to the product of the smallest integer, x, and 4. So it means 4 times x. So let's simplify 1, 2, 3 x's, and then 2 plus 4 is 6 equals 4x. Well, again, just like before, I have only an x term over here, so that's where I want to put them. So I'm going to subtract 3x to cancel, which really makes this problem easy because now I have 6 equals 1x. So I now know that the smallest number is 6. So the next number I will plug in. 6 plus 2, the next number is 8. And then for this one, I will plug in 6 plus 4, so the next number is 10. So my three integers are 6, 8, and 10. Let's do one last word problem. We have a house painting company charges $376 plus $12 per hour. A second painting company charges $280 plus $15 per hour. The question is, how long is a job for which both companies will charge the same amount? In order for them to charge the same amount, that means that company A has to equal company B. So we're basically asking, where does A equal B? And so we have to have an expression for company A and an expression for company B, and we'll set them equal. Well, company A is $376 plus $12 an hour. And I want that to be equal to company B, which is $280 plus $15 per hour. So we've got to figure out how many hours does it take for them to be the same. So we've got to solve this for H. Well, I need to get my variables on the same side. I have plus 12H plus 15H, so I'm going to move the smaller one over. So I'm going to subtract 12H. So I have 376 equals... 280 plus 3h. Well, now I gotta get h by itself, so I'm gonna subtract 280. So these cancel. And so I have 96 equals 3h, and when I divide by 3 on both sides, I get that h equals. 32. So it takes 32 hours for the two companies to charge the same amount. Now part B says, what is that amount? Well, since they charge the same amount, I can either plug 32 hours into company A or the 32 hours into company B and see which one works. So I'm just going to use company A. 376 plus 12 times 32. And I'm going to figure out what that equals. Oh, I did that math wrong. My bad. So I end up with 376 plus 384. And when I add those together, I get that they are going to be equal. That cost will be $760. So in 32 hours, both companies will charge me $760. Before that, company A is cheaper. And after that, company B is cheaper. So it just depends on how many hours you need the house painting company to come out and paint for who you're going to choose. But there's, there's the problem. That's variables on both sides. Um, I hope you have a good rest of your evening. I will see you tomorrow.